Hello, it's Sally here at Dotty B. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me. Um, today I'm going to be making um, some Easter bunting. Um, I'm going to show you what I've gathered. Um, some fabrics, threads, um, ribbons, just move those out of the way, some beads. Um, and I'm going to be putting my bunting onto um some of these these this this these are just plastic ones um i've got um a few that i've had lying around for a while and i've been wondering what to do with them so i thought i would make some bunting um so what i've done is i've made most of the letters already so i just need to do the e you can see those there so i've done um most of the letters and i've mounted them on to um a cot a silco one of the silco reels that i've got um i think there's there's also a coats one there as well so that's what i'm going to be doing and i've left one to show you how how to do it so that you can if you want to um make your own then you can follow along with this one here all i've done so far is cut out um a piece of base fabric um, which is um, about eight inches by just over one inch. I kind of used my ruler. I think my ruler must be an inch wide and kind of just um, used the width of my ruler and just did slightly bigger as I tore it, as I tore the fabric. So eight by about one, just over one, I would say, just to give you a little bit of space. Because um, I think the, if you look at the, the rib, the, the, the bobbins, it's just over an inch, an inch wide there. So, but if if you're using bobbins, you can just measure your own bobbins just to make sure that um, the fabric does fit. So it kind of fits around it. And um, so, yes, a straight piece of, um, just a piece of backing fabric. Um, I've used just an old piece of, um, of sheet, cotton sheet. Um, and then what I've done is, it's a really good um, project. This is for using all your scraps because all I've done is take little bits of fabric um, and attach them using canther stitch. So just tiny bits of fabric, look, really small bits, just in lovely colours, lovely Easter colours. I've chosen to go with yellows, blues, and like a peachy, peachy, peachy colour, peachy um, yellowy colour. And then obviously I've got the um, the dark peachy colour for the letters. Um, so. That's, that's what you do there and then you just take a tiny little bit of snippet of um, lace or trim I've got a little bit of trim on that one and a bit of embroidery on glaze on that one a um, little bit of um, trim on that one got a bit of lace on that one and a little bit of embroidery on glaze on that one as well so you have your strip of fabric and then you need to put your letter on. So what I've done is I wrote out, I, I drew on a piece of paper, I drew out some squares, not squares, oblongs, um, approximately, and again, well, it was exactly two inches by just over the one inch. Um, and then I kind of just drew in a little bit because I, obviously I didn't want it to touch the edges. So I, I drew in about just, less than a quarter of an inch really in and then just do got a pencil and just use the box as a guide to do my letters so i did all my letters fancy like that then a piece of tracing paper traced over them so i'll just do this and i have already got an e traced out because there's obviously two e's in easter but I don't mind them being different. So like that. And then just draw on the back of it. Because you'll need to go through. Like that. Take your piece of um, fabric. And then just position it. Where you want it to be. And if you... Just position it and then just draw over gently because um, you've put the canther stitch on. It can be a little bit lumpy, but um, if you just gentle, then your pencil shouldn't go through 
the tracing paper, although it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter, just something like that, and hopefully you can just see it. I'm couching over it doesn't matter if you draw on here because you shouldn't be able to see it but you could always use them um, um what they called those pens friction friction pens those kind of things you could always use one of those and then iron it off if you can still see it but I'm quite happy with that as it is um and then I just um I'm using um a dmc I'm using all six strands of this one, and I think this is it's a three five one number. That one is. So I've got a piece here that's left over, and I think it will probably be fine um, for this letter. I'm just wondering where my needles are. Right, okay, needles. Okay, I'm just going to take this use one needle for the thick thicker thread and then you can do you can use a contrasting thread you can use the same thread but I found this here this is a silco um, cotton, cotton machine thread it says I don't know what number it is or anything oh number 36 but it's just it's just like a peachy color so I thought well that won't that goes quite well with this so I, I may as well use this and it kind of fits in with the silco cotton reels and everything um okay, another needle so i'm working with two needles this one's a, um, a thinner one this one is a chenille 22 this one i think is a dana number five i think it is So, it's a bit of, all you do is, along the line that you've drawn, just come up with this, the thin thread and go back down again, very close to where you came up. And if you just do that all the way along, that will make the shape of your letter using the guide that you've got, your pencil mark or your friction pen. go around looping it like I am you can just go all the way I've got a knot just felt it Okay. Um, right, so I could do with now moving some bits out of the way because I just get entangled up in what I'm doing. Right, let's just move those out of the way. Entangled. Right, let's try that again. And then we go around like that. I'm still tangled. Oh, it's fine. Well, I've got a knot there. straight 
hope you're all well today and finding some time to stitch it's a lovely day here in the east midlands of england the sun's been out it's not out at the moment but the sun has been out it's been lovely the dog's been running around outside Oh, I've just <laughs> I spoke too soon. I've got um, raindrops on the wind. The rain raindrops literally just started as I said. It's a lovely day here. We've got rain now. It's literally raining. Hey ho. It seems like we've had so much rain just recently. The ground is sodden. Spring is sprung anyway. I think it's, is it spring equinox today? I think it may be. And all the beautiful flowers are out and the birds are singing, or they were singing before it started raining. Can't really hear them now. Right, we've just about finished the main part of the E. So I'm going to just go down where the end is, somewhere there. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to come up here and go down. You could always finish it off if you don't want to. Oh no, it doesn't matter about the back because what I'm going to do is when it's wrapped around the reel, this bit here will go down and cover my sewing. I know there's a reason why I did that. So I'm just going to finish this off. Not that one off. That's that one done. And I'm just going to, what's happened there? I'm just going to carry on. I've just got a few more stitches, one, one stitch here at the end. And just a couple of stitches on this one here. And then that's the letter done. You just do the same on all the others. Oh, I've pulled that too tight. So that's that with the E. So now um, get your your roll. You're not your roll. You your bobbin, and you wrap. It's the fabric around the bobbin. Just making sure that the end kind of covers the end of the fabric. There, you can still you have that dangling, but um, you want to do it just about there. Uh, and then I just need a piece of. Um, Cream thread. And sew it into place. So just that goes there and then going there somewhere. I'm just going to try and hide my knot and then all I'm doing is just a running stitch really. I'll just back stitch that first one though. Because I've done cream fabric you can't really you can't really see it very well. So I don't think my stitch is going to be particularly neat, neat but they are quite small. So they shouldn't be too obvious. And the 
last one. I think oh, maybe one more. Okay, I'm just snip that off. <clears throat> so that's that. Um, it's still a bit flappy. I can't remember what I did on these ones. I think. Oh, do you know what I did? I cheated. You can sew them down, but I didn't. I glued them. I just took a little bit of glue. This is just a normal glue stick you stick paper with. Just a tiny bit, not too much. And just pop it down like that. That's all I did with that. And that's stuck quite well. So, there we go. That's how you do with the bobbin. So I've got my letters, E, A, S, E, A, S, T, E, R, Easter. Okay, so to put them, attach them together, I have um, got some, bake. I think it's called baker's twine. It's just um, a bit of stringy type stuff. Um, I did try I did try it with a jute string, but it was too thick and it wouldn't go through some of my beads. So what so what I'm going yes, what I'm going to do, I've got some beads. I just went through I've got like a, a box of just random beads. Uh I've just picked out some colours that kind of suit this. So I've got some green, some peachy oranges, um, white, um, yellow. I haven't got many yellows, but I've got one in a limey green colour. Anyway. So they're my beads and then I've got some ribbons um, in all different, the same kind of colours, complementary colours. And I've also um, got some strips of fabric in here as well. Um, all I've done with these <clears throat> is tore them into strips and they're about, they're not like your thumb wide. <laughs> Te that's a technical term, I think, <laughs> a thumb wide. And then about, about 12 inches but I might trim these up. I'm not sure how they're going to look. So I've done mine about 10, 12 inches, but you can do them whatever. All I've done is I've taken, I'm using quite light fabric. Um, I'm just like quilting fabric. I'm just giving it a snip. And then most of them just tear, tear. And I just like the edges on it. Look, they look good. And once you've kind of, took all the fraying bits off, then they don't really fray any more than that. So um, I think they look quite good and they're going to hang in between the, hang in between the bobbins. And then I thought I'd put some beads in as well. So um, yes, what I'm going to, so I don't know whether, what I'm going to do is, I try to get organised. That's as organised as I've got now. So anything else I do is kind of, um, kind of don't know what I'm doing really. So I just thought I'd have some big beads in between. Just dropping them. I think there's enough for one. Yeah, there's what enough for one big bead in between. I like that one better than that one. There's too many of those. Um, One there, that one there, something like that. Okay. Um, yep, yeah, they're all rolling around. And then I thought I'd pop some more kind of in between them. If I can put two, if I can put four in between each one, I don't know whether I've got enough. Four, four. Yeah, I think I'll have enough. I'm going to swap some of these these bright ones for the the other kind. Okay, I think I've got a white. A white one would be nice instead of that orange one. A white one there instead of an orange one. Um, that one there's got a duplicate. We'll have that there. Right, so kind of like that anyway. So what I'm going to do is get my 
I've, I've already threaded this onto a thick needle and I've checked that it does go through my beads which are running around all over the place. So I think that will be okay. Um, I don't know whether to knot. I'm going to lightly knot it because I don't want them running off. So I'm going to leave my ribbons for now because I can tie them on. I don't need to thread them on, but everything that's threaded on, I kind of need to be organised, I think. So if I start here... So that's the end, and then I'm going to go through the first one of my bobbins. Then I'm going to pop a couple of small beads on. Whoops. I'm running around all over the place. Right, so a small bead. Then a large bead. And then a couple more small. And then my next my next bobbin this one hasn't been pierced through but go through like that yeah okay um, so then two small beads my large bead and then two more small beads oh, that's not gonna go through I thought I'd check them all. I'm running around all over the place. Um, okay, let's swap that one for another one. Hang on, let's see what this one's like. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so have we got another small bead? Right, and then my bobbin. Oh. Okay, and then two small beads. The big bead. Oops, it's wandering off. That one, that, and then this one, <laughs> and some beads. That one, then that one, then that one, then that, then another bobbin. Get there. Okay. Um, okay, bobbin, then two beads. Oops. That blue one. Oh, it's not going to go on. Let's try find another bead. Let's try that one. Yep. Oops. Big. And a couple of small. Last bobbin. And then a big bead so <laughs> that I don't know whether it will fit in now under the camera but kind of like that okay so I've done that and I'll just pull this end through here and that so just to secure it and everything and also to make a hanging loop um, I'm just going to double it over like that and then I'm going to pop a knot just here So that one there, it's got a knot, and then I'm just going to do the same the other side. No, I'm not, I'm not. I'll tell you why in a minute, because I'm going to um, put some ribbons and stuff dangly down, aren't I? And I think I might need, oh, look at that, that's just pulled, because I've pulled it too far. I'm just trying to get inside the bobbin. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a ribbon or a piece of fabric that I've ripped and... Um, it's if you go from the back and then into the front and then just do that. Oh, that's the wrong way. I'll try that again. You automatically want to go to the back, but you start at the front and then go under. All that it all that it means is it just gives you a nicer. A nicer finish, it gives you like the, the bit over there rather than the back. You might like the back better, but I wanted something like that. So that's like that. Okay, so that's the first one. That bead there, I'm just going into that. Okay, I might put, shall I put a ribbon or something around? So I've got some ribbons as well. This is like a peachy 
bleachy ribbon so all I'm going to do on this I'm just going to just do a snip there to make a point and then I'm not having these mega long I have about there so what's that that's uh about seven inches that one is um I think I might just tie this one on There you go, just a knot like that, and it's going to it's going to go out like that, but that's okay. I'm happy with that. Um, then next one. Okay, I've got a blue. So I'm going to do one on this side. Oh, again, I go over the front, not the back, like that, and then through. Like that and just make sure you're not covering any of the beads okay that's that one done okay i'm going to put another couple on this one so i've got a little bit of orange wick rack some peachy ribbon if I can find the end okay that one's already got a point on it I'm just doing points because it stops it from fraying and again I'm just going to knot this just tie it like that okay so you can see kind of what I'm doing I'm just going to go all the way along. I'm doing the same. I've got quite a lot of um, where the end of my thing is. I've got quite a lot left, so I've got um, plenty to play with. I think I cut this this string about. Um, I think I cut it about a meter, a meter long. Um, so, what else have we got? Let's see. I've got some more rip rack here. I've got some yellows. I could use. Uh, doesn't seem to be fraying this doesn't so I can't remember how much I cut last time about there that's about, that's about about eight inches that one is so where are we um I think I might keep it fairly similar so put the ribbon at the edges and then the long dangly bits in the middle where the big the big um, bead is so I want another piece of ribbon for there and at the moment all I've got is this, this peach of it the pe two peaches I have got some more ribbon I will get some in a minute I've got some green which would look good I'll have that there and then I'll do another bit of fabric so I've got this um, florally fabric which will look nice okay there and then another piece of ribbon right I'm just going to grab my other ribbons one of them that one getting tangled up in all the ribbon now okay so i've got this one here this is a nice green ribbon where's the end i might use this one yes it's a new one but it's a new old one i got um a job lot last year with loads and loads of ribbons i think it was a florist that um, I don't know whether she'd retired or she just shut her shop but um, she was selling it all off so I managed to get a lot a lot of ribbon which kind of always comes in handy well that's a nice colour um, okay I've got that green there as well I've got ribbon there use that one 
can use all your little pieces up on this. All your little scraps that you've got, you can use for your ribbons and use scraps of fabric. It's a, a great stash buster. So that's that. And then we're going for another piece of fabric. I should have probably cut some more fabrics because I haven't got, um, I, didn't, I didn't cut that many. How many have I got? Okay. Having an argument with the ribbons okay so I've got let's see a blue one again have I used a blue one yeah I'll use a blue one I could use it somewhere already haven't I yeah I may have to cut some more that goes there and then another ribbon and then another green piece Another piece of ribbon. Let's go for this peachy, peachy colour. If I can find the end again, it's disappeared. And then I could put some more rip back, haven't I? Let's do some more rip back. Got two colours of rip rock. I've got this goldy, goldy yellow as well. Let's put some of that on. Hmm, what's happened there? It's just getting everywhere. This ribbon. <laughs> it's really tangled up in it. Right. Okay. That's that. Um, and then another piece here. What have we got? Um, another piece of yellow. No, let's go for the printed one. Okay. Um, another piece here. Let's go for... more letters left to go. Yeah, so that's that. That's, that one's all done. Yeah, so oh, I've only got this one left to do. Okay, I might have enough actually because I think I've got one more, one more piece of fabric. Yeah, I've got this as well. Unusual. Does that look okay? No, I'm going to leave that. So next is another piece of ribbon. Let's go green again. Okay, and that can go there. I think I've just got enough actually. I don't have got to cut any more. I don't know how that happened. Then another oops, coming undone a little bit. Okay, and that uh, another piece there. Let's do Rick Rack. Let's do the brighter yellow. Ribbon. Um, let's have the bright, bright peachy, dark peachy rather. Oh, that's fell off. Hmm, what's happened? Oh, okay. I'm not sure what's happened. Right, okay. We've got some some damages. Let's see if glue will fix it the labels will come off it'll be a shame to lose the labels because they they add something don't they they look nice I'm sure if I just stick them on probably be a little bit too rough with it let's do that one 
I'm sure that'd be fine. Okay, so that one needs to be there. Um, that, that, that. And then we've just got this one to do. What did we do with the end this? Let's just have a look at the end this way. Um, we had ribbon. Okay, and then just one. I've got one. I've got the yellow. And then we'll do that one. Uh, and that's it. That should be it. I don't, I don't think you're going to be able to see it if I hold it all out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang it up and then put a photo at the very end. So you'll be able to see. I'm just going to, some of the little bits need squeezing up a little bit. Just to make it all in line. That's why that one's, oh, that one's not. Okay, that one's come off again. I may need to put some more glue on that. Okay. Um, right, I'm just going to hold, I don't know whether you can see it or not. I'll just kind of. Move things out the way. You can see. I'm quite pleased with that. I love the colours. So what I'll do is that it, when I just what I'm going to do it right. So tie this off now. This needs in. So again, a loop like I did before, and then if you just kind of pinch it there, you should just be able to get it. If you're very gentle, you should be able to get it. And careful, you should be able to get it down to the to the bead like that, and then just snip that off. Okay, that's done. So, there's the Easter booting. So, that's it. Uh, what I'll do, yeah, put a picture at the end and then you should be able to see it hanging up. So, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed looking at my Easter bunting. I've enjoyed making it anyway. I love the colour. So, really pleased with that. So, that's going to hang up over easter and i'll be able to put it away and then get it out every year so thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you again soon okay take care bye bye